I give up. What is it? I don't know. It started out to be Tappy, but I think it got away from me. Oh, yeah, it got away from you, all right. They just don't make recipes the way they used to. No, they don't. Moms usually work. I got it. Hello, Ross. What is it? Well, we're not sure yet. We're going to send it over to the lab and have it analyzed. Well, yeah. it's interesting. I'll get it. Yeah, it is interesting. Maybe I should give it a name and package it. We'll just be sure to put a skull and crossbones on the label. Hello, Mr. Darren. Good morning, Kathy. I've got a letter here for Patty. Oh, I'll give it to her. No, I'm sorry. She has to sign a receipt. Oh, can't I sign? Oh, no, no, not for this. This is registered. Oh, I see. I'll get her. Patty! What is it, Kath? There's a letter for you. You have to sign for it. Thanks, Kath. Hi, Mr. Darren. Oh, morning, Patty. Here, sign right oh, there. thank you. Okay. Good, thank, thank you. All right. There you are, thank Patty. Bye-bye. Bye now. Hey, Kathy, the postmark's from Russia. Who do you know in Russia? Who knows anybody in Russia? The only one who could be writing you the... Hey, what is it? Do you remember my telling you about that civics assignment we had? We all had to write to some government official? Yes. Well, some of the kids wrote to the mayor and the governor and some senators. Yes. Well, I never told you this, but I wrote to Kozlenko, the head of the Russian Presidium. And I think he answered me. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins. Identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends. Different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet. The ballet russe and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves her rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. And what a wild duet. Still the cousins. Identical cousins. And you'll find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. Yes? I'm Harold Rainey from the State Department. The State Department? May I come in? Of course. I'm sorry. This is Mr. Rainey from the State Department. Ours or theirs? Uh, it's my husband, Mr. Lane. How are you? How do you uh, do, Mr. My Rainey? daughter, Patty. Hi. Uh, my son, Ross. How do you do? How are you, Ross? Won't you sit down? Well, thank you, thank you. The uh, post office department notified us that they, they processed a registered letter from the Russian Kremlin sent to this address. Yeah, here it is. It's from Mr. Kozlenko himself. Mr. Lane, I want you to understand we've no wish to intrude on your privacy, but when the head of state writes to a private citizen, naturally we're interested in the correspondence. Sometimes we get very valuable readings on the political temperature. Do you understand? Oh, well, of course. What is that? Well, what Mr. Rainey is trying to say, Patty, is that sometimes the head of a foreign government will use the citizen of another country as a kind of sounding board. Sometimes he might say things in his letter that he wouldn't want to say officially. Do you mind if I look at your letter? Oh, no, not at all. It's kind of sticky. I'm sorry. It won't do you any good. It's in Russian. I read Russian. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, what does it say? Mr. Lane, do you mind if I take this letter with me? I'll give you a receipt and I'll return it to you myself. Well, I have no objection. Uh, excuse me, but it's my letter and I don't mind your borrowing it, but I'd like to know what's in it. You'll know Miss Lane in due time. But first, I'd prefer to take this up with my superiors. Oh, well, will you tell me what's in it? I'll be back tomorrow. Wait till the kids hear about this. Miss Lane. Yes, sir. 
I'd appreciate it if you didn't discuss this with anyone. I can't even tell my friends? Not until we've had time to analyze the contents of the letter and decide how you're going to answer it. I'm going to answer it? That's right. You may have a chance to make an important contribution to your country's foreign relations. Uh, nice meeting all of you. Bye-bye. Wow! Do you realize that the fate of the world is practically in my hands? <laughs> Pat, pass the meat, please. Pat? I made a mistake. About what? I should never have given that letter to Mr. Rainey. How do we know he's from the State Department? We let a perfect stranger walk out of here with a very valuable letter. Get her the international spy. Well, did anyone ask to see his credentials? If he weren't from the State Department, how did he know you even got the letter? That's my point. If he were a spy, he could find out easily, couldn't he, Dad? He could be a spy. You see? Sure, he tricked you out of that letter because he knew Mr. Kozlenko was giving away all of Russia's secrets. <laughs> I'll never be able to sleep tonight. I've got to know what's in that letter. Well, darling, you'll know all about it tomorrow. In the meantime, Patty, while you're waiting to make your contribution to the world, would you like to do something for your mother? Sure, what? Pass the meat. <laughs> About what? Mr. Rainey said he'd bring my letter back today. The day's not over yet. Well, it's 8 o'clock. He's not coming back and I'll never see the letter again. Patty, I'm sure he will come back with the letter. What if he doesn't? The head of a foreign power writes to me and I don't even answer. Do you know what that could mean? War. <laughs> Go ahead. Kid around. All I know is that I've... Miss <laughs> Lane. Oh, hi, Mr. Rainey. Sorry I'm late. Oh, you're not late. What's after 8 o'clock? Is it? My time does fly. <laughs> this letter, I promised to bring it back tonight. I'd almost forgotten. Do come in. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Rainey. It's good nice evening. to see you again. How are you? Good evening, Mr. Rainey. Good to see you again. I have the letter right over here. Well, that's good, because Patty was just saying she thought she'd never see it again. Oh. <laughs> now then. My dear Miss Patty Lane. Honey, it's the same in Russian as it is in English. No, no, I'm translating. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your kind letter in which you inquired about freeways in Russia. Freeways to... in Russia? Well, I had to ask him something. <laughs> in your country, freeways are connecting links on which automobiles may travel. Here in my country, we prefer the freeways of the mind in which people can communicate with one another. It is a pity, my dear Miss Lane, that our two countries are so far apart. It is sometimes difficult. Uh, would you repeat that part again, please? It is sometimes difficult. No, 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 the part about my dear Miss Lane. Patty. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. For people to communicate exactly what is in their hearts. I think it's very interesting what he said. Yes, we think so, too. What do you think it means? Oh, obviously a suggestion for high-level conference. How do you like that? I called a summit meeting. Can I have the letter to show to my friends? Eventually, yes, but for now, we'd like to hold on to it in case our G7 section wants to examine it. G7, is that right? Miss Lane. <laughs> we'd appreciate it if for the moment you'd uh, keep this entire matter confidential. Oh, you can count on me. My lips are sealed. Mine, too. Naturally, we'd like to continue the correspondence. Oh, naturally. I can't wait to answer, Mr. Kozlenko. You already have. Excuse me. Uh, we've taken the liberty of drafting this reply for you. All you have to do is sign it. If you'll just sign... Right there. No, I can't sign that. You can't? No, it's not me. Miss Lane, this letter was drafted by three members of the State Department, carefully gone over by one of our cabinet members, then completely rewritten by one of our former ambassadors to Russia. Have you signed the letter? I can't, Mom. Like he said, it's eight other people. Listen. Dear Mr. Kozlenko, I am sure that I express the sentiments of the majority of my class when I say that the free exchange of opinion is vital in order to achieve a basic understanding among all the peoples of the earth. Don't you believe in that? How do I know? I can't even understand it. <laughs> it simply means that... I know what it means, Mr. Rainey. But people don't talk like that. Oh? How would you say it? Do you really want to know? Yes. <laughs> Here we are. 
Dear Mr. Kozlenko, it was a gas to get your note, and I want you to know I really dig your suggestion about heart-to-heart -heart communication. I agree with you that anything else is a bad scene. I know, because I've had this problem with my steady, Richard. You're going to try and explain Richard to Mr. Kozlenko? <laughs> I heard about him going out with another girl. I figured I was wiped out for good, and then I decided to have a showdown. So I went to his house and blew my cool, and it turned out... <laughs> I can't go with you, Richard. You can't go with me where? Wherever you were going to ask me to go. Oh, I wasn't planning to ask you anywhere. Oh, well, I can't make it. I have a very important appointment. Oh, okay. Uh, Richard, uh, there's no point in asking me to discuss it because I can't. All right. Uh, you know, I'd love to tell you, but, uh, well, I, I can't. Oh, sure. Don't worry about it. I was kind of sworn to secrecy, you know? Honey, if you want to go to the mall shop with some other fellow... I... Oh, no. The mall shop it seemed so long ago. It was yesterday at 4 o'clock. Yes, well, uh, I'm afraid I won't be seeing much more of the mall shop, Richard. I'm going to be very busy from now on. Oh. Yes, every citizen must make his sacrifice. Well, when you're through making yours, I'll be at the mall shop. Before we begin on today's assignment, I have some exciting news for you. You remember those letters you all wrote to various government officials? Well, Patty Lane, who wrote to the head of the Russian government, actually got an answer from him. I know I'm awfully anxious to hear all about it, and I'm sure you are, too. Patty? I'm sorry, Mrs. Donaldson, but my lips are sealed. I beg your pardon. Well, you see, uh, this whole thing has to be kept in the strictest of confidence. Oh, I see. Well, I guess it's all right if I mention that I'm working very closely with the State Department. You see, it's a very delicate matter because, well, the fate of the world hangs in the balance. As I said to Mr. Rainey, well, he's actually the secretary to the Undersecretary of State. Mr. Rainey, I said, you can tell the president that he can count on my fullest cooperation. <laughs> what? Patty, where have you been? We've started eating. I went to the library. Oh, it's raining out again? <laughs> I'll choose to ignore that. Was there any mail for me? From Mr. Kozlenko? Patty, you only wrote him the day before yesterday. I'm sure he has a few other things to think about. I guess so. Darling, put the books away and sit down. What are the books? Oh, just some reading matter I intend to delve into. The collateral influence of American foreign policy in fiscal treaty negotiations. Metternich's influence on the post-bellum Austro-Hungarian conflict. The economic aspects of the European common market. It's the sort of books that you just can't put down. You can't even pick them up. Would you please explain to him that the fate of the world is nothing to joke about? The fate of the world is nothing to joke about. <laughs> Dad, I've been mulling something over. Would you mind very much if I went to Harvard? No, but Harvard might. Got a Harvard's a boys' college. Now you got the idea. They allow girls in their graduate school and in their foreign service school. Most American diplomats are trained there. You mean you're thinking of going into the diplomatic service? Why shouldn't I? I've already got one foot in it. Well, Patty, the foreign service is a very difficult career, especially for a woman. Claire Booth Luce made it. And what about Pearl Mesta? But do you realize that you'd be sent abroad? You'd be in a foreign country someplace. We'd never see you. Why couldn't you and Dad come with me? You could be a great help to me. I mean, the social side of, of diplomacy is very important. You could be the official host and hostess. You'd have to give me a little time, because I'd have to let him know at the office that I was quitting. Oh, I'll give you plenty of time. What about me, Patty? Are you just going to leave me here? Of course not, Kathy. You can be my social secretary. Oh, thank you, Patty. <laughs> Jesus, what about me? I mean, I'm too young to be a diplomat and too old to just sit around doing nothing. Oh, Ross, I'm sure we could find plenty of things for you to do. You could run errands around the embassy and you could carry the diplomatic pouch. Gee, thanks, sis. You're the best ambassador a brother ever had. <laughs> okay? Okay. Get around. But I'm serious. You are? Yes. Ross, where are you going? To apply for my passport. Ross! <laughs> sure yet which country I'd like to serve in, although I do lean towards France. I think France is going to loom as a big diplomatic problem. Can I ask you something? Sure. What is it? When are we going to see this letter you got from Kozlenko? 
Monica, if you knew anything about the mechanics of diplomacy, you'd realize the letter is now being examined by G7. What's G7? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to divulge that. Uh -huh. uh, how about the answer to your second letter? It's been over two weeks since you wrote it. You really don't understand, Monica. Everything we write to each other has to be weighed and reviewed by the experts on both sides. That takes time. And imagination. You're suggesting I made the whole thing up? I'm suggesting that you turn the whole thing over to James Bond. Because, frankly, I'm bored with this whole scene. That's one girl I'm never going to invite to my embassy. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Darren. Oh, hi, Patty. Thank Good morning. You. Uh, Mr. Darren, there seems to be a letter missing. Really? Yes, uh, from Russia. What, Patty? You got a letter from Russia just two weeks ago. I know. This is another one. It's an answer to my answer. Well, I'll see that it's delivered to you as soon as it turns up. Oh, what if it's already turned up? What do you mean? Well, you could have lost it. Patty, I've been delivering mail for 30 years. I've never lost a letter yet. There's always a first time, Mr. Darren. For instance, your card is sitting out there right now, unattended. Someone could walk along and just pick a letter out of it. Now, why should they do that? Well, let's say it's a very important letter that some foreign government might like to get a look at. Patty, I think you've been going to see too many movies lately. Don't you care about the fate of your country? Yes, I do. And that's why I've got to get out and deliver the rest of this mail, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> No, no, from some girl. She left a message. Well, what was the message? Oh, uh, well, she wanted to know if you'd be interested in running for some position. What kind of position? Uh, president of the Oris Magnum Society. Oris Magnum Society? I've never heard of any such... Ross, it's one of your stupid jokes. No, honest. Then it must be Monica. I don't get it. Oris Magnum is Latin for Big Mouth Society. Hey, that's pretty... Stupid. I've got to get that goon girl off my back. She and her drippy friends have been needling me all week about that letter from Kozlenko and embarrassing me in front of the whole school. I've got to find some tangible proof to get them. And you can help. Oh, wait a minute, Patty. I don't hit girls unless they hit me first. Oh, stop being silly. I'm going to call Kozlenko. Patty, you're out of your tree. Come here. Don't argue with me. All right. Say you do call Kozlenko and talk to him. How are you going to prove it? That's where you come in. You know that funny little gadget that you stick on the phone and then plug it into the tape recorder, the one you got for your birthday? Oh, no. Dad told me if I did that again, he'd plug it into me. Oh, come <laughs> on. He was only talking about fooling around. Now, do you think Dad would do anything to stand in the way of foreign relations? I don't know. You sure it wouldn't hurt my domestic relations? Ross! <laughs> okay, there we are, all ready to roll. Okay. Operator, I'd like to call Moscow, please. Uh, no, not Moscow, Idaho. The original Moscow. In Russia. That's right. I'd like to talk to Premier Kozlenko at the Kremlin. Yes, I'll hold on. I'm getting hungry. She said she'd have the call through any minute. You could have walked there by now. Listen, why don't we just... <laughs> uh, yes, Operator, you've got my party on the line? Say something. Here, you talk. I'm nothing doing. <laughs> um, hello? Is this Mr. Kozlenko? That means they're recording the conversation, too. Oh, I better be careful what I say. Mr. Kozlenko, this is Patty Lane. Beep. Doing? Beeping back. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kozlenko, I don't happen to speak Russian. Do you happen to speak English? 
когда вы услышите звон, будет 8 часов 6 точно. I guess he understands it, he just doesn't speak it. Uh, the reason I called... Beep! You knock it off. I, I was saying, Mr. Kuzmenko, the reason I called was because I didn't get an answer to my last letter. I know you're very busy, but... Когда вы услышите звон, будет 8 часов 6 и 1 четверть. Uh, Mr. Kozlenko, it's very difficult to carry on this conversation, uh, but all I, all I want you to know is that, well, our correspondence means a lot to me, and I'll be looking forward to your next letter. Have you got any idea what he's saying? Who cares? All I know is this is going to put Monica in a basket. <sighs> What's keeping Mr. Rainey? Oh, relax, darling. You know what the traffic is at this hour. You know, I probably should be pretty angry with you for making that phone call without my permission, but uh, I've got to admit I'm impressed with the results. Thanks, Dad. I did the recording, you know, and the beeping. I'm impressed with both of you. And as soon as Rainey gives me a clearance, I'm going to write a big story for the paper. Oh, Dad, that'd be wild. I can just see Monica turning a lovely shade of magenta. <laughs> I'll get it. Must be him. Hi, Mr. Ring. Let me take your hat. Everybody's inside. Isn't it wild about my talking to Mr. Kozlenko? Yes, but I really wish you'd consulted us first. Oh, don't you admire my initiative? Well... Mr. Rainey's here. Should we get started? Oh. Hello, Mr. Rainey. Shall How I nice turn on the machine, sir? I know. Uh, just let me get set here first, please. Oh, I wish I'd called up Monica. I'd like to see just how magenta she'd get. All right, Sonny. Well, say something. Here, you're talking. Nothing doing. Can't you go past that? Uh, hello? Is this Mr. Kozlenko? Well, what do you say? Let me hear some more. Mr. Kozlenko, this is Patty Lane. Beep. What are you doing? Beeping back. Uh, Mr. Kozlenko, I don't happen to speak Russian. Do you happen to speak English? Когда вы услышите звон, будет 8 часов 6 точно. I guess he understands it. He just you can turn that thing off, Sonny. Uh, that was not Kozlenko. Are you sure? Of course it's him. If it isn't Kozlenko, who is it? May I translate? Of course. When you hear the signal, the time will be exactly 8.05 and three quarters. <laughs> you mean she called for the correct time? I'm afraid so. We spent all that money just to find out what time it was in Russia? We. Oui. You mean I spent all that money just to find out what time it was in Russia? <laughs> you know, frankly, I thought it was rather odd when you phoned me. There's an eight-hour time difference. I couldn't imagine what Kozlenko would be doing in his office that late at night. Well, I must say, it's really... Well, you know, it is kind of amusing. <laughs> kind of. Now, honey, don't feel so bad. Your intentions were fine. You know, Patty, the little people of the world figure there's no way for them to reach people in high places, so they just don't bother to try. Now, if more of them had your initiative, I think the results could be pretty startling. You mean I don't have to pay for the phone call? I didn't say that. <laughs> well, I must be going. It's been very interesting. Uh, well, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Right, Rainey. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rainey. Oh, here's your hat. Thank you. Uh, I understand your organization is pretty good about keeping things quiet, hmm? uh, Yes, in that area, I'd say our record's unblemished. Oh, good. Uh, well, then, uh, in that case, Mr. Rainey, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd keep this thing strictly between you and me. You see, if any of it leaked out, uh, well, it would ruin my entire social life. I understand. Uh, you have my word. We'll consider the entire matter top security. Uh, thank you. You see, because I, I really don't look very good in magenta. <laughs> Walk 
like a time, say, even talk alike. You can lose. 